All right. Hi, can you hear me? Good, yep. Hi, everyone. So today I'm going to talk about material design for Rails. I'm Sam. So a while back, I started the journey of trying to find out the um, unifying UX experience for my own app. I want the UX experience to be the same regardless of iPads, computers, large screens, TV, watches, and so on and so forth. So I chanced upon material design. And uh, today I'm going to use that format, this format, is to go through the materials with you. Uh, material design has a very brief, very short uh, history so far. It's introduced last year by Google. I'm going to go through that. And who are the target audience material design is for, the principles of material, what material design isn't, some of the material design UI, why should you use material design, comparison with bootstrap. I know it's not an apple to apple uh, uh, comparison, but it's good to put things in perspective. And then finally, a jam that you could use so that you could apply material design in your Rails app today. So uh, Google announced material design about last year, June, uh, in the Google I.O. conference. And the crux of that message was that uh, material design is a visual language for, uh, that expresses principles of good design. And also, it's a unifying system that will provide the same UX across all devices and screen. That's all. That's basically the, the key message from Google. Who are the audience? Well, first of all, application users, because that's the people who will interact with the app that you design. Second of all, developers, right? Not so much for UI and UX uh, designers, because they are the guys who come up with the new UX, new UI elements, right? But it's actually the developers who consume all those concepts and apply it to the apps, and then in return, your users will use them. Um, yes, visual comms designers could learn a few things from Google. That's definite, but they're not really the direct um, audience. Now, it's, it's hard to jump right in and show you a few things of material design without going through some of the uh, basic principles of material itself. Um, it's very wordy. I'm just going to go through very, very quickly some of them. Well, material design is a 3D world, so light and shadow give depth. Shadow is not just an effect. Um, the width and height may vary, but the thickness is always 1 dp. So, because material design runs on the x, y, z axis. So the thickness of every object um, is important. Elevation cast shadows. Uh, content behave independently of the material, but limited by its bounds. And um, number six, no two material can occupy the same overlapping x, y, z point in space. Well, with, as with uh, reality world, we don't really have two things uh, knocking each other on the x, y, z space. Material cannot pass through another material. That's straightforward. If you take two pieces of paper, they don't go through each other, right? Um, material can change shape, can shrink, grow, not a problem. Band folds, join together, split. Uh, they can be simultaneously, uh, so, sorry, spontaneously generated or destroyed, right? Uh, material can move along any axis. Um, the Z axis motion as a result of a user interaction. So I'm going to try to show that down the, some of the slides. Now, what material design isn't, right? Um, just to put things in perspective as well, it's not just a bootstrap theme, and it's not just a CSS or Android theme. You actually see material design more prominently in a few places or a few apps. Uh, firstly, in Lollipop, the latest, or one of the latest um, uh, Android OS, um, in Google Drive, in Google Inbox, some of those apps. But it's not just a CSS or Android theme. It's not just a concept without implementation. There is implementation. Um, it's not just for the web. It can work for your watches too. Um, so as a mock-up, there is uh, a watch mock-up, watch face mock-up uh, using material design concept. Right, so now I'm going to jump right in and show you a few material design UI elements. Um, like Bootstrap, it has a responsive grid system. So 12 columns and row and columns. That's not very uh, surprising. It has shadows. So because material design talks so much about shadows, um, in, in Bootstrap or any other CSS, you have, to, you have to actually specify your own box shadow. But in material design, since they have talked about the different layers or different depth 
uh, it's good to have a CSS class that actually define all that already. So what it means is that the one with the depth 5 is closer to the screen. And the one with the depth 1 is further away from the screen. Um, in conventional UI, when you press a button, when you use a mouse click and you click, the item actually goes further away from you. It goes down. But in material design, it's the reverse. Why? Because nowadays we use touch screen more so and often. So when you, your thumb presses on the glass, the, the uh, material actually goes closer to the glass as a magnetic effect. That's how it works. Colors, uh, material design, or Google is nice enough to de define all the colors for us. There's a, sh there's a very uh, huge palette of colors that you can use. And there are some color theories, or say uh, style guides that uh, Google has left us with to say that perhaps uh, you want to use a certain contrast to emphasize important things, and you shouldn't use certain colors or foreground with certain background. And if you were to see, look at the code uh, I have here, in SAS, the blue and lightened four are classes, and you can use the same on your markup. I'm going to show a gem later on that will demonstrate this. All right, um, so like Bootstrap, Material Design has a number of uh, responsive framework classes that allows you to specify medium and down, medium and up, large only, small only, height on sh small only, or height on, or show on small only. So that's all there. That's not too different from Bootstrap, actually. But where it differs, uh, elements like this, responsive typography. Well, um, no matter how responsive is your web design today, your text sizes are about the same, right? So, but in this gem that I'm going to show you guys, it knows both, both diff has actually the exact amount of text, same words, same characters, right? But uh, the one on the right hand side uses less uh, or smaller font size, it's responsively resizing itself. Okay, so you don't have to like, do all the media queries on your own. Uh, I tried that before. It's very frustrating to fit on all screens. And all you need to do is add a class called uh, flow text. Truncating text as well. It's just a class called truncate. And it figures by itself whether there's enough width. All right, so this has a very good use case where let's say you're developing a travel website and you have a description of a location, right? So you want to have the more, toggle more and less of the description of the place. You could truncate or don't truncate, you know, you can work that out. So it's very easy. Without using a lot of JavaScript, you can actually have truncating uh, text. Um, floating buttons. So this is one of those features if you, that, that material design actually tried to uh, express. Uh, if you try out any of the uh, later, uh, the latest Google apps, say Google Drive, or you try out Google Calendar, you actually see this, or actually even uh, Google Inbox. It works as a very, um, um, a very good contextual manual, right? And, but it's also very nifty. It doesn't take up a lot of space. And if you look at the markup, it's actually quite straightforward. It's just a button, floating button, large, with effect and red color. Very straightforward. Navbar. So I think uh, one of the things I tried to do with Bootstrap was to mimic the Google inbox search bar. So if you want to cl click on the, uh, the search and you want the whole bar to change color and all, you, you probably have to write some form of CSS transition and then use a JavaScript toggle. But uh, this gem that I found actually tries to uh, mimic all that uh, behavior. So pretty good. If you try to search, it switches to white color, switches back to red or whatever color that you choose uh, for your theme. Okay, toasters. Um, you could do this in Bootstrap as well. But what's interesting here in this uh, uh, framework is that uh, they know if you're on a larger screen, iPads, iMacs maybe, and uh, the toasters will come from the right. And if you are on a mobile device, a smaller device, uh, it comes from the bottom. And then you can swipe it away. It comes with uh, building gestures as well. So what it means to developers is that you don't really have to care. All you need to know is that, oh, this is an alert. Let me toast it. 
right? And then the framework takes care of it by itself. And many, many more features that I cannot go through in one talk. Um, but I can highlight a few. There's parallax. So a lot of us like to do parallax uh, website designs in these days, and they have that. Pushpin, which mimics the um, material design uh, pushpin. Tons of transitions, and they have um, sticky footer. Um, more importantly, this gem called Materialize SAS um, actually provides you with SAS variables, SAS mixins, and SAS um, prefixes, which is really interesting because I'm going to showcase some of those uh, uh, website uh, that has applied this gem right now. Okay. Okay, let me zoom this. All right. Okay, let's click. <laughs> Burger website, right? And, and um, so this website is used uh, material design, specifically material SAS, CSS uh, gem, and it uses a few nifty tricks, uh, of which, uh, one of which is the uh, spy fire, which means as you scroll, it detects a certain scroll height and it fires an event. So let me try to do that now. I scroll, you get to see that. Scroll some more, you get to see some of that. Yeah. So all this is built in to the, uh, the framework. You don't have to like, you know, uh, borrow, install, or add another plugin for this. Okay, and it's really nice and you can actually, uh, let me try to resize this thing and then Okay, let me try to resize this. And like you would expect, the website actually resizes itself pretty well in a very responsive fashion. It has a nav bar, so you can access all the manuals, regardless of screen size. It has a little alert on the bottom, which can go away. Okay. Um, next, yeah, so this is the parallax theme that I talked about. Um, it's one of the effects that come with the, uh, the framework. So as I scroll, you can get li this little, little parallax effect. Uh, okay. That comes out of the box with the framework. Okay, next, this is a website. Uh, it's actually a kiosk mode uh, lockdown app for Android OS. Uh, but what's interesting is that the website actually has a lot of stuff, a lot of uh, details that would fit very, very well on a large screen. But look what, look what happens when I try to resize this. Okay. Again, the sidebar is there to navigate all the different links. Okay, so this is more like a real application with a lot of details on screen and it looks really well on a large screen. And see what happens when I try to resize the height as well. You will see that actually the floating button is here. Yeah, the floating button is there. Okay, it doesn't take a lot of space to show the details of the page, whatever you want to navigate. The page still works. You can still double tap. It works. So what I really like about material design is not so much just a framework that allows you to, say, detect large screen, small screen, and everything. Even a UI element behaves differently on different screens. And a lot of those are not just code. It's actually UX uh, design concepts uh, passed down by Google. And, and I like following button a lot because a lot of the time, if you look at visual hierarchy um, from Visualcom's design, you would have a nav bar on the top, and then you have the site links, which are the sidebar, right? And then you have the content. But then more often than not, you're going to have links in the content when you click, and you try to navigate your sidebar or the nav bar. But sometimes you want something contextual. What happens? You don't want the content area to, to, to change or to 
uh, swap out your parents. In this case, it will be the sidebar or the parent or the navbar. So what you can do is to provide a floating button. The floating button menu changes as you select different items on the content area. And that would conform to uh, visual hierarchy, pretty much. That's what I like. Uh, OK, so I'm going to go back to these slides for now. OK, so why material design? It conforms to visual hierarchy. Why is that important? So that as a developer, you crunch a bunch of code, you create an app, and then your US guy come along and say, hey, that looks cool, rather than, hey, that doesn't conform to you know, uh, visual comps. So you, you, you actually get to write good UI and good UX. Materials and metaphor is a natural approach because it tries to mimic paper. Motion provides meaning. And this is something that um, a lot of coders, a lot of front-end coders, we, we know how to create animations, right? Sliding, you know, um, gradient alpha and all. But sometimes they are overdone. Sometimes they, we don't use certain effects that we're supposed to do. And um, so if you study material design, it actually teaches you how to use motion in a very meaningful way. So if it comes from the bottom, it wants your attention. It comes from the side, it's more so for uh, information and navigation. And because of that, you will have less user training with a standardized, standardized UX. Across different apps, if you apply the same principles, the UX is the same. So a user would know if I swipe from extreme left to the right, I pull up the sidebar. But if I swipe from the center to the right, it's more of navigating between cards. So that is one of the example. And that example can apply on your watch, on the iPads, uh, most probably on your browser as well. It's a spec rather than a uh, framework for responsive design. And why is that important? Because we all know if you use Rails, it's an MVC framework, but you can actually code it such that you defy all the MVC values, right? But you're still using Rails, right? So uh, material design, because it's not specifically an implementation, it's a design concept. So if you do not apply some of the material design um, principles, you are actually not following material design at all. So that's more important. It has a consistent icon, UI element, look and feel. So it's not just colors, it's not just buttons and all, your icons as well. You can look at the example there done by Google. It's pretty good, very nice. And so that your app won't have a certain look and feel for buttons, but then the icons look totally different. Um, in fact, if you look at Bootstrap 3 or 4, um, in order to provide a very good uh, consistent icon design, the bootstrap guys have reduced the icon set to a very low fidelity, just one color, white or gray or black, you know, more of outlinish silhouette icons, so that it will fit all uh, situations. Uh, but that low fidelity sometimes may not be um, enough. So material design actually has a guideline for icon design. And because it uses size, color, and depth for emphasis, which is more natural, right? So, um, for example, on an air ticket, if you want to develop an air ticket, uh, ticketing app, right? So, what's the most important? Not quite the date, because you already you you usually get your boarding pass on the date itself. So, well, the date's not so much important. What's important? The gate number. If you get a gate number, you get the airline correct. You get the airline correct, you get the rest correct as well, right? So maybe boarding time, right? So those, you use a bigger font, maybe a more high contrast color. The less, I mean, the, the, the rest of the, uh, the information may be lower font size, uh, less contrasting colors. And it works from desktop to watch. OK, just a short little comparison um, between material design and bootstrap. Um, I like to say that material design is 100% replacement, although in certain cases, I will still use bootstrap. Yeah. So, well, material design first and foremost conforms to visual hierarchy, right? And it's a responsive design. Whereas on bootstrap, if you use bootstrap, it allows you to conform to a responsive design. That, there's, a, there's a huge difference there. So, because bootstrap allows you to know when 
the screen is small, when the screen is medium, when the screen is large. The default UI elements will respond accordingly, but your custom elements may not respond. And you have to write CSS that detects those sizes and then respond, right? But since there's no guideline as to how you should respond, so it's up to you. And then you have this ping pong between your UX guy and you, you know, as to uh, maybe for a, for a small screen, switch the fonts to something else, and large screen, use certain fonts, and then everything else. Right? But uh, material design, because it's not really an implementation, it's more of a concept, it already shows you how to do so. Um, material design is a responsive set of layouts, UI elements, and user interactions. Um, Bootstrap is more of a grid system with a default UI look and feel. Like I said, material design is an opinionated UX. So it's very opinionated in terms of the UX. But Bootstrap is very opinionated in terms of the implementation. And therefore, material design do not or does not have a popular implementation yet. Um, there is materialized CSS or materialized CSS. There is material light from uh, Google. But there's only one official implementation from Twitter for Bootstrap. At the moment, material design is more so a designer ecosystem. Whereas Bootstrap, you have a lot more designer themes, you have plugins and jQuery and all sorts of. Um, the only few plugins that I see that is targeted for material design is React.js. Uh, I guess kind of work hand in hand because of a fixed UX, fixed UI kind of a concept. Uh, React.js is uh, kind of like uh, naturally suited for that. Um, material design provides you with transitions, typography, icons, UI elements, tables, colors, layout, and navigation. Bootstrap is more for layout, icon, form elements, and navigation. Having said that, Bootstrap 4 is now in alpha, so check it out as well. All right, so how do you use material, material design in your code today? You actually can use your uh, material design in your code today. And all you need is to add these two lines, the top two lines, uh, gem, materialize sass into a gem file. And I recommend using Rails utils. Right? That's a gem written by Winston. Um, you have to include the icons font to utilize all the icons. You have to include materialized sprockets so that all the JavaScript goes into your assets pipeline. You have to initialize JS and bind some of the events that you want to use. And you can use, in, use the uh, built-in CSS classes and you can also use the SAS variables mixing prefixes. Um, let me see what's the next slide. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a example, a very basic sample app. Okay. All right. So pretty straightforward. Add materialized SAS into your gem file over here, and add Rails Retails over here. So that's step one. Step two, include the font icon, right? Sorry, the icons font. That's simple. Just go to your application layout and include this line. It's actually a web font from Google. Materials icon, quite straightforward. Okay. Next step, initialize J, sorry, uh, include materialize sprockets. That's also pretty simple. Just go to your application JS and add this line. Require materialized sprockets. And now you are you have enabled materialize. And the next thing you need to do is initialize JS to bind events. And I happen to have such a file here. Um, the reason why I use Rails Utils because it kind of organizes your JS code for you. So I have a single point of init for all pages of my app. And this is where you could actually um, uh, bind all the universal events. You can also bind like, page-specific events or, or controller-specific events if you want to just create more methods or more classes. And you can use like, built-in CSS classes. I'm going to demonstrate that by just bringing up one of the hammer files, quite straightforward. It's actually a navbar fix. The navbar color is cyan, lightened one. It's a navbar wrapper. I have a um, brand logo here. And I have a vertical align. I have material icons here. 
is on the right hand side, it hides on medium and down. So I have two manuals. One hides, one doesn't hide. Quite straightforward. And lastly, I can use a lot of the SAS variables. So let me show that to you. Um, utility. Let me see. Leo. So this. See that there? This little piece of code. So all the media queries, you used to have to tell your CSS, hey, which size to which size. But now you can use all these variables. And that's specified by material, uh, materialize. And all the classes that you can apply, for example, wave effect, which is this ripple effect when you click on a button, you can just extend it in, in SAS. Even down to colors. Your primary color, your secondary color, all the different colors, you can use them as variables. And that's basically a very simple demonstration of how you can use it. And if you are wondering, I have a lot more resources to share. Um, the gem comes from materializecss.com. There is a huge gallery on materialup.com. I'm going to show that to you guys in a sec. Uh, you should check out Google's material design spec. There's a lot to read, a lot of videos to watch. It's amazing. There is a gem, another gem called Material Icons for Rails, which will just include all the icons to your assets pipeline. Um, there is the Material Icons Guide from Google. And uh, there is another font called Material Design Iconic Font. And that's also on GitHub. Um, the credits are for some of the references that I have picked up. All the icons you have seen on the slides, I picked it up from uh, Material Up and uh, the, some of the websites that I have showcased. And so if I were to return back to Material Up. So this is Material Up. It's a very nice website with a lot of uh, showcases of material design. Really, really nice. You're all animated. Check it out. Also, icons. This is the material design, con uh, material design iconic font. The actual spec itself from Google. Lots of videos here. You should check it out. And finally, the gem that made it all happen, materialize. So a group of really, really nice guys who, uh, let me bring up the, um, the credit page. These guys who made it happen. They implemented all, if not more, than the spec and made it happen and provided a SAS-friendly gem. So I don't have to learn all the colors, the hexadecimals and everything. I get to use them as variables. I could extend them any way I want. I could use them on a markdown, sorry, on a markup or within my SAS. I, I know that a lot of people don't like to put classes on your HTML tags. They say, what if I could just bundle them in a class? So now you can do so. Just keep extending those classes in SAS and just apply a single class on your markup, right? And they have a lot of uh, JavaScript stuff, very nifty tricks they have applied to the gem, wonderful team. And uh, yes, if at all, I think uh, the credit goes to all of them. They did a good job. Yeah, in fact, which is why I recommend this gem more so than Material Light from Google. All right, that's all I have. Thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions for that? No? Okay, yeah, but you can look for it after that, uh, or after uh, meetup, then uh, now we have to long, we'll do the. Five random repeats for this. Video. Okay.